My name is David Baldwin. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to speak here. I never take it for granted. I, uh, everyone here that's on the volunteer staff serves more than me. They all, and, and I'm humbled to have the opportunity. They're always here. They're always serving. They're always praying. And I was part of the ministry about a decade ago and uh, got a family and kids and, you know, doing that whole thing. And that's really been my focus. Um, I've written a book and it's called Demystify the Devil. Demystify the Devil, Unmasking Our Adversary's Role, the Role of Our Adversary. So working on that. So um, I have been pursuing, you know, what God has put on my heart. And uh, so we're getting, we're in the cover design and kind of the last part of it. So I'm excited about that. But um, I say all that to say that I am, I am truly honored and humbled, especially because there's people here that are every day, day and night, driving down, meeting people during the week, meeting people before service, meeting people after the service. And they're here 10 o'clock at night cleaning and all these things. So it, it is truly an honor. I am truly humbled by it. So let's open up in prayer and let's get started. Amen. Amen. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this, for this day and for this opportunity. Thank you for each one of the lives represented here today, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the children's bread. We thank you for the power, the anointing that breaks the yoke. We thank you, Lord, that you never intended to leave us empty handed, but you has spoken our pro the promises and the answers are yes and amen. And Lord, you've sent us the helper to be with us. You've prepared us. You warned us of what was to come. But you said, no matter what, you'll always be there with us. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray that chains will be broken, eyes will be opened, lives will be restored, families will be healed, people will be brought back together, Lord. I pray that the seed sown today, Lord, will bring forth fruit, 30, 60, 100 fold, not for my glory, but for your glory, the name above every name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, um, just a little kind of uh, praise report, exhortation. Thank you, sir. But just what I was just talking about. Um, my wife did a half marathon today. Yeah, yeah. She watched it on TV, and so, you know, so kind of... You know, but no, she actually ran in the half marathon today. And I, I say that because when she was a teenager, she was overweight. She was, I don't know what, to me, it was only like five pounds, you know, but to her, it might've been more than that, but she was overweight and she had this one summer in Wisconsin. They would go back up. That's where her family was from. And they would go back up in the summers and she was working at a restaurant and it's kind of around the other side of the lake. And so she knew that she had to do something. And so she rode her bike every day back and forth to work. And I think she only ate like pickles and hard boiled eggs, something, something, something weird like that. Okay. Nothing. No, no Carl's Jr. Okay. Just, just very strict. And she lost the weight in the summer. She lost whatever her goal was, 20, 30 pounds. And as she's gotten older, she's continued to pursue that and to be intentional. And it's just a reminder to me of the power of discipline. Like she took something that was unnatural for her. Some people are just skinny. They're born skinny, you know. Right. They don't have to work at it. They they naturally shed weight. They have a high metabolism. They they don't like to eat food. You know, there's you know, whatever. It's all in their favor. And uh, but other people, that's that's a, that's a real battle. And for her, it was a battle. And but it's the power of discipline that you can by daily discipline, by doing something continually each day that you can go from one being one type of person to a completely another type of person. So I want to encourage you in your walk with Christ that even though something now might seem unnatural, it might seem hard. It might seem like, oh, this is the die is cast and this is how I am. Right? Doesn't the enemy try to tell us, oh, that's just who you are. That's the way it's always been. 
Well, he's bluffing. That's not the whole story. It doesn't have to be that way. One of my favorite verses, my favorite verse, my lifetime verse, if you will, is 2 Corinthians 5.17. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, all things have become new. All things. All things. And, and so I want to encourage you that anything is possible. Stick with it. Be persistent. Next thing you know, you might be running a half marathon and barfing into the Scottsdale River. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't do that, but I thought it would be funny. All right. Thank you for coming to the deliverance training. Last time, I just want to do a quick review. I see some new faces, and it's always good to review. So let me open this up here. I talked about a couple of concepts. Concept number one, deliverance is not about getting delivered from. Fill in the blank. It's not about getting delivered from, it's about getting delivered to. We sell ourselves short, we sell people we're trying to help short if we don't point them in the right direction. They come into these doors because they have some major issue or hang up that they've been struggling with for years, if not decades, and they're desperate to get that gorilla off their back. But it's not just about getting the gorilla off the back. It's about, you know, soaring with Christ. It's about running and not growing weary, walking and not fainting. It's about mounting up with wings like eagles, right? That's, that's the picture, right? That's, that's the picture. So don't sell yourself short of just trying to get rid of, uh, get out of Egypt to get into Cana. It's about getting to Cana, right? It's not about just getting free of addiction. It's about getting freedom, sobriety. Amen. You know, my, my testimony online is I am an ex-schizophrenic. That's, that's my testimony. I am an ex-schizophrenic. You know, the play on words is from like N.A. and A.A. where they say, I'm a recovering alcoholic day by day. Well, no, you still have those addictions that are dormant in you that you're still wrestling with. But as a Christian in Christ, I can be completely healed and delivered. And I don't need to be a recovering addict or alcoholic. I can be an ex. That's the difference. So I'm an ex-schizophrenic. I don't struggle with those hang-ups or challenges, the delusions, the hallucinations like I did before. The racing thoughts, that's all gone. Amen. It's been 14 years, 14 and a half. So that's po anything's possible, right? I like what Mary said. She said, I don't believe this. I think it was Michael the archangel came and spoke to her. She said, I don't, what, how could this be? I've never been with a man. Mary's like, that doesn't compute. That doesn't happen. I had everybody ever told me, except for a, a handful of people, one or two people, that said that I could be healed. Everyone else said I couldn't. That's just how it is. You're just going to always be mentally ill. Mary says, how is this possible? I've never been with a man. But then she says, here's the catch. She says, but not let it be to me, but according to your word. Amen. I am a servant of the Lord. She said, okay, if that's what God's wa God wants to do, I'm down with that. I don't know how. It doesn't make sense. It's never been done. But okay, I'm a servant. The Lord wants to use me like that. Amen? That's a power powerful attitude. So we don't have to just run from this thing is shrinking. This is... Here you go. So... We don't want to just get delivered from, we want to get delivered to. God wants us to bring us to a place of wholeness, of sobriety, of, of just, just wholeness. He wants to restore your mind. He wants to restore your body. He wants to break you free from that addiction. You're, I used to smoke cigarettes. I, 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 that doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. I want to barf when I smell them. You know, you can be set free from those things. You can be an ex, whatchamacallit, amen? 
to be not just set free from anxiety, be, but to be reborn, a place of hope. Not just for deliver from fear, but fear to faith. Okay, that's deliverance. It's, it's what's the destination? Concept number two, spiritual warfare is an umbrella term. Deliverance is a part of spiritual warfare. Remember we put that up there and you have spiritual warfare is... is the umbrella term. Deliverance is a part of it, but we also talk about praise and worship, right? That's going to get you stronger for the battle. I like to listen to praise and worship when I'm coming down here. So I want to kind of get into the, into the zone. Uh, we talked about uh, reading the word, discipleship. That's like basic training, right? I got I to gotta be walking the walk and, you know what I mean? Talking the talk and walking the walk. I got to be doing it. I can't be living like a devil and expect to get set free. Because I'm going to get my face smashed in. So I, I got to be a serious disciple. I, you know, that's what a true Christian is. We've given up control of our lives. We've submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is the King. And the main reason people don't get delivered is that dynamic right there. There's a part of their life. They're not willing to surrender to Jesus. They're holding on to something. They, in one aspect or another, they still want to be Lord. That's not how it works. That's not the system he set up. The, the laughter's gone, Kelly. There, so. so send in more of the nitrous oxide or whatever that is. Does that make sense? Like if you're talking with somebody and you're saying, man, you got to let this go. I, that's, I mean, it helps if you're empathetic. I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm sorry you went through that. I, you know, I went through something similar. You're trying to empathize with them. And, but we got to let that go. It's the, the enemy's got a foothold. I call it a point of leverage. He's got, he's got a spiritual legal right to, there's a part of their life that they haven't surrendered to God and the devil has a legal, spiritual right. I think it might be, I haven't thought of this before, but it might be tempting Christ to ask him to deliver us from this area when we're not submitted to his will. Because we're asking him to go against his character and nature. Okay. I want to be free from bitterness, but I won't forgive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the God of the universe is going to break the rule just for you. You, you wait for that one, okay? Uh, discipleship, deliverance, praise and worship, prayer. So deliverance is an umbrella term. Oh, the gifts and the fruit. That's not gluten-free. Gifts in the fruit. <laughs> it would be hard to do deliverance without the gifts of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we need a lot of help on that one. And the fruit. What good are the gifts without the fruit? That's the whole point of the end of 1 Corinthians, right? There's not self-control, there's chaos and disarray, it's going to be confusing, you're going to turn up, turn up people away, visiting the church, you know, everyone's yammering and jammering and, you know, and all this stuff is going on, the chaos and confusion and people are, you know, proud of this gift and proud of that gift, but there's no love, you know, so you got to have those work in conjunction, that's part of spiritual warfare. And also service, serving, Amen. So those are the two concepts. And then today's concept, and I was kicking myself when I left the last time, but l little did I know that Brother Mike was, he had it all under control. <laughs> What's behind here? All right. What's behind here? The second, the third concept, today's concept of deliverance is that to be delivered in true Christianity for that matter, true discipleship, is to be aligned with Jesus. 
to be aligned with Jesus. So you have the, you have the kingdom, you come from the kingdom of darkness, and you have the kingdom of light or the kingdom of God here. And I've got these parts of my life, you know, whatever list here, issues, hang-ups, heart issues, relational, financial, spiritual beliefs. And slowly but surely, as I go through deliverance, I'm going to start getting them correctly over here. How I view myself. I might suffer from condemnation and shame. I might have a low self-worth. I might have an inflated self-worth. But when I get delivered, my view of self is going to be proper over here. You know, I'm, I'm not... I'm not the center of the universe, but I'm not at the bottom either. You know, God has put us in a special position in his creation, right? We're above all the animals. He's given us dominion over it. We're made in the likeness of image of God, but I can't save myself. I didn't make any of this stuff. I didn't give myself any special skills or talents or abilities. I'm, not I'm just responsible for what I do with it. So we get a healthier sense of our view of self over here. Uh, maybe your, your finances, your how you treat others over here is all worldly. And then you get, as you get delivered, it's, it's aligned. Your life is aligned with the kingdom of light. Does that make sense? So when you're going through, when you're going through deliverance, You know, it's not, it's not clear cut, but I view it as like two columns. And I'm going from this column of the world of the kingdom of darkness. And if, for me to be delivered, I need to be aligned with God. And I, how do I get aligned with God? I, I get in his word. I mean, you've heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you. Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. So my old mindset is being renewed, and now I'm getting aligned with the kingdom. Uh, now I'm delivered. I'm, I'm, I'm sound. I'm whole. I'm standing in a stronger position. I don't have those vulnerabilities that I had when I was over here, and I was doing things the way that Satan wants me to do them. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that goes through your whole life. Through, through every area. It's exhaustive, right? It can be exhausting. But, but that's the thing. The picture that I want you to get is we're getting people, we're, we're getting them out of alignment with the kingdom of darkness and we're helping align them with the kingdom of God. We're helping them getting them lined up with the word of God. Any uh, thoughts, any questions? So that, like, from a, from a perpendicular view, it's like that. From an overhead view, I had a donut. It's like my donut, see? I was paying attention. Public schools ain't half bad. Come on now. So let's, again, let's do this kingdom of darkness here. And... Some of us get all the way in here, right? We were. And the kingdom of light over here, or the kingdom of God, and you guys know the word sin, right? Know what it means? Right. So we can get where we're, we're in the bullseye. I'm aligned with God. My thought, my thoughts. Now, all, all my thoughts gonna be perfect, holy unto God. No. No. Why not? Humans. Yeah. But why else? Yeah. Is is your mind open, an open system or closed? It's open. It's permeable. It's like a sponge. So. 
So an overhead view, I can, I can be aligned with the kingdom of light. Now we have these, these radiating bands. And a lot of people are kind of in the middle, right? They've compromised to a certain extent. They've justified. They've bargained with their conscience. And they kind of end up somewhere in here. And, and these people are, are going to be difficult to work with. It's like Jesus talked about lukewarm believers. They're kind of in here. There's parts of their lives that resemble the kingdom of light. But there's also parts of their lives that resemble the kingdom of darkness. And we need to encourage them to keep going. We need to say, keep pressing in. Keep, keep going for more of Jesus. Keep seeking the Lord. Keep praying. You know, you might be aware of this paradox, but they may not be ready to hear it. They may not be ready to hear it from you. How many have tried to convince I notice there's not many family members here sitting with each other. Hey, 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 observation. How many have noticed deliverance doesn't go so well with your family? Hey, Ma, you need, you need to go to deliverance. Okay. You need to move out. See, that was personal experience. That doesn't go very well. So usually they don't want to hear it. They've bargained, they've justified, they've compromised, they're, they feel, they're, every, we're all in a place where we kind of feel comfortable. You know, there's times and situations we don't feel uncomfortable, that motivates us, and then we get to a place where we're comfortable, I'm happy, this is good, we're good. I can see the Lord from here, and I'm not, too, I'm not who I was, right? But we need to encourage them, and that's one of my themes for today, is encourage, and it's such a neat word, because encourage to put courage in someone. We want to, that's what our job is. We need to encourage them. You know, they've, they've all heard, no, you can't. Black sheep, lost, wayward, no hope, nothing's going to work. Wasted money, wasted time. Should have never had you. They've heard all that. And that creates a plateau in their mind of how far they can get. But how many know one person saying you can do it? Praise God. Come on now. That's it. I'm putting courage in her. You can do it. It's possible. Just keep sending them to Jesus. Keep sending them to Jesus. He's got more for you. I don't know what it is. He's got more for you. He's doing something. I don't know what it is, but he's doing something. I know you're going through a difficult season, but there's so, God's, he's do, there's, there's something he's working out. Just keep going. Incur that's one of the best things you can do for people in here. I know when they come in here and we're, we're like, Bloodlust, we're ready. We get the chainsaws and the scalpels and the swords and the knives, and we're ready to slice and dice and you know, cut the fat and throw it out and rah, rah. It's just, you know, but what about the day after the battle? What, 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 what do we give to them for that day? How many know you go through a serious deliverance, you go home, you don't even. You feel like a stranger in your own house. You're like, I don't know if I can even sit anywhere. I don't know these clothes, the music. I, I want to just burn it all and start over. You don't even feel, you know, you go through a major deliverance and, you, well, the next thing you got to sleep in your bed, and you're eating food out of the refrigerator, and then you're watching your TV again. You're, it, it's kind of, life kind of goes on. So we get these people that come in here and they get a big boost. They get like a, a boom. And, they're, and it's shot in their arm. But then on Monday, Tuesday, they're, they're back in there. Yeah, and it, it wears you out. If you're not ready. If you're not. So we, the, one of the biggest things we can do is we can encourage them. Just keep going. Keep pressing in. 
Keep believing. Keep, I, I, I sound like a broken record. Amen? My scripture for today is the, uh, in Luke chapter 8. And I like, I, I like Luke because there's all, it seems like there's always a little bit more detail in Luke. So I, I like Luke. And I had, a, I had a neat idea for a, uh, you know how you pass out the New Testament and Psalms? What if we did like Luke and Acts? Put those in a little booklet. Pass that out. Because then they get the gospel and they get the birth of the church. They get all that good stuff. Anyways, that'll just have to be another season. So Luke chapter 8, verse 4. When a great crowd was gathering and people from the town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock. As it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. We can relate to that. Amen. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. Man, those are some mean thorns. Come on now. <laughs> And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, he who has ears, let him hear. When his disciples asked him what the parable meant, he said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. Why? Because they're... Knocking, asking, seeking. I was listening to a commentary on this the other day, and it's like he spoke in parables, and it's like, well, yeah, we're in a spiritual warfare. We're in a spiritual war with the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. You're not just going to come down and broadcast what you're going to do in plain words. It doesn't work in football. It's certainly not going to work in spiritual warfare. You know, hey, we're going to run right here. Go right there, I'll throw you the ball. <laughs> this is how we're going to defeat the kingdom of darkness. No, he would speak in parables, and the ones that were interested would, hey, what, what do you mean? What? There's some wisdom in that and how we lead and direct people. He said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the, yes, yes. Thank you for bringing the A group today, Kelly. That was good. The, <laughs> the B group, man, that's pathetic. Okay, all right, here we go. The ones along the path are those who have heard what? The word. Oh, oh stop. Hey, stop acting like the B group. They've heard the word. Then who comes? Yeah. What? I thought I was immune. No. I can't touch this. Well, actually, the devil comes. He takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. So, I, I mean, that's such a powerful picture of the enemy. He's disabled this. Like, get it out of your heart. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, they receive it with But these have no root. They believe for a while and in time of testing fall away. And as for that, what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life and their fruit does not mature as for the good soil they are those who are hearing the word hold it fast in an honest good heart and they bear fruit with patience so the title of this training is cultivating deliverance that lasts because 
the majority of people, when they come here, they get a powerful touch of God. You know? But when they leave, how do we, how do, how do we maintain momentum? Because Jesus is saying in this parable that you have people with different heart conditions and their heart condition determines their outcome. And so when we're working with somebody or even individually when we're working through an issue, the condition of our heart is essential. The word is the same. God's the same. The environment might be the same. The revelation could be the same. The need could be the same. All these things could be the same. But what's the condition of their heart? That, in a way, has the, the most important, the most profound effect on the whole thing. Except for if someone never heard the word, right? But even then, God is speaking to them through creation and their conscience. So in a way, the most important thing, and this is the first parable, and he says, if you don't understand this, how are you going to understand the rest of it? So he does elevate this. Christ elevates this parable as an important teaching point. And so in a way, the condition of their heart is the most important. And I think inadvertently I might have stumbled upon why pe some people, they, they can't make it. They don't last. They can't run with it. It's because of their heart. I was coming on the way down here, and I used to, I used to work at the Dream Center. And it, it's a phenomenon because... It's a phenomenon because you have this huge faith-based recovery, uh, you know, program. And unfortunately, the ones that you see multiple times are the ones that come back. Well, and, you're, and in your, the, how you're impressed, it's weighted towards those because the ones that are successful don't come back. <laughs> so they're, they're out there somewhere. But Peter, Peter was one of those. Peter Valenzuela. He went through the Dream Center. He's on fire. He's serving the Lord. He's preaching. He's Even back then, he was doing ministry outreaches in Mesa, and then he got connected with Rick and was going to the jails. He's, he's dynamite. He's, he's one of the good soil. But there's others that are struggling. And I used to work there, and my, I got a kind of fix-it mind. And I'm like, well, what could you do? What could you do better? How could you adjust this? How could you adjust that? Well, they need more of this, and they need less of that. And this. Well, what if it's just the soil? What if that's it? What if that's the million-dollar answer? What if it, it's just, dang on it, it's the dirt. <laughs> you know, after all, the, it was the dirt. <laughs> Oh, shucks. <laughs> See, you know, when I, and sometimes I'll even say more colorful words. I just FYI, I'm trying to shake that little legalistic box that some people sit in. So if I say crap, oh, I shouldn't say that. Wait for lightning. No, God knows my heart. I'm trying to shake that religious box that you might be sitting in. I digress. So it could be the soil. What if it's the soil? Jesus said it's the soil. He said that you've got these four scenarios. The exception, which I don't want to spend much time on, is, is the good soil. And it bears fruit. And in some instances, that word comes back 30. Sometimes it comes back 60. Sometimes it comes back 100. That thing is golden. That's a lot of times the people you see here serving. They take it. They receive it. They're, they're able to sustain. They're able to implement it in their lives. They're able to make the proper changes so they get from point A to Z, B to C to, you know, over here so that they're, they're not so vulnerable and overcome and overtaken by spiritual forces against them that they've stripped themselves down. They've humbled themselves, allowed the Lord to do a sifting and a combing through them and their souls and their hearts and their minds. They're completely trust Lord. They're completely obedient to Him. They've been made new in the image of Christ and they, they're able to do some stuff Amen. hopefully you didn't miss that because I would not be able to repeat that <laughs> it's like a greenhorn versus a journeyman the guy the first day on the job the guy that's been there for 30 40 years like that's so much what deliverance is in spiritual warfare it's rolling with the punches you get over here, you still get hit. 
No one's immune from getting hit. If Jesus was crucified on the cross, you're not immune from getting hit. Get that lie out of your mind. What did he say? Tribulation will come. Something else is a false gospel. But the difference is because I'm submitted, because I've been humbled, because I've been stripped down, because I've been stripped from the cares of this world or the deceitfulness of riches, because I'm not shallow and rocky and hard-hearted anymore, because I've been planted over here in Christ, I can withstand the storms of life. I'm not a baby tree that needs the... I'm strong. I'm an oak of righteousness. That's what we're trying to get people to. But it may be the soil. So three words, weak, weary, and wayward. When you're ministering with someone, there are going to be those people that take the ball and run with it. Those people, <laughs> just cheer them on like the ladies running in the race today. They didn't need, <laughs> the, good job. And they just kept running. They, they've got it. Oh, encourage them. Pray for them. By all means, it's a team sport. You're going to get people like that. And those are, oh, God bless. You know, you get, you get, for every one of those, you might get, what, is it 10, 15, 20 knuckleheads? I, I don't know, somewhere in that range. It's, it's not proportionate. I know that. It's not 25%. I know that for sure. So he didn't put a number on it. He just, <laughs> but, but beyond those special cases, look for weary, weak, and wayward. Look for that in the person because that is the pitfall or the plateau that could limit their deliverance. So we're cultivating, we're farming, we're producing, we're fostering growth to cultivate <coughs> We're trying to create lasting deliverance for these people. And Jesus says, hey, look, there's going to be different types of people that come and they hear the same message and they're in the same environment. Notice that the soil is in the same environment, the same, the surrounding thing, the seed, excuse me, the seed is the same. The environment could be the same. It's the soil. It's the condition of the heart. And he says, hey, some, some are going to come in, and you think about it, you know these, they come, and they, they're happy, and they're excited. And you're like, oh, this is a good one. They're going to run with it. And they're like, three weeks later, where are they? The, the, they're weak. That's the weak one. That's the rocky soil. The time of testing came, and they couldn't withstand it. Is this helping anybody? Yes. So when you're asking them questions and you're praying for them and you're hearing their story and their testimony, just in the back of your mind, not all of them are, but are they weak, weary, or wayward? Or is, is, this person, is this person maybe just, they're excited, they're happy, they found something new, they're hopeful, but, but they're young in the Lord. They don't have a good support system. They don't really know the word yet. And it's not a slight on them, but they're weak. It's, it's like an infant. It's like a newborn. There's different things that you need to do with a newborn because they're weak. They're still a person. They still have as much value as anyone else, right? But they're, they're weak. They're vulnerable. They're not strong. And there's people that come in here. And the thing is, look at how they receive the word. They receive it with joy. And they, they get, yes, this is it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I found a place like this. I'm so happy. I'm so excited to get healed and delivered. And, and, but they go on and then life shows up. And it starts to grind them down. And they don't have the strength to get through the week or to get through the seasons or some people don't even don't have the strength to come back. Do you ever remember being in a place like that, that you had to like do like pseudo Jedi mind tricks to get yourself to go to church? Come on now, I've been there. <laughs> I, did, I used to have to do that. Sometimes I still do. Just be honest. Just be honest. Don't throw any stones. 
You can tell people, keep coming back. Keep coming back. Hey, just keep coming back. Just keep coming back. Keep watching online. Keep, come on. you, you have to cultivate, you have to help them overcome that weakness of rocky soil. Do you see it? They're weak. Like I said, young in the Lord. You know, you know, some people are like, it's more military. What do I need to do? Sir, yes, sir. Okay, I'll do it. I'll start tomorrow, 5 a.m. Okay. There was no expression there. There was no happiness. But you guys going to do it. Some people, yeah, this is awesome. I'm so excited. And you know, it's like, ah, that's a firework. That's not going to last. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yep. that, that's a sign of weakness. <coughs> According to this parable, in certain situations, mm -hmm. Tennessee and Alaska not included. Amen. All right, let's continue on. <laughs> to cultivate, to prepare or prepare to use for raising crops, or in this situation, disciples, to foster growth. Jesus' goal was not to start, just this is Rhema revelation right here, honey. <laughs> start passing the offering bucket, Kelly. This is, this is, this is deep. This is deep. Hold on. Get your pencils out. Jesus was not trying to start a farming revolution. Did you know that? <laughs> Nor was he wanting to institute another round of do's and don'ts. Hmm. 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 Mm. More religion. Don't do this. Do that. A lot of times in deliverance, we do that. Oh, I can't go there. I can't go this. I can't touch that. I can't listen to this. I can't look at that. Uh, well, the Holy Spirit's everywhere. He's not phased. So, and if we follow that logic, if no one goes and no one's sent and no one hears, how will they believe in whom they have not heard? Amen. I'm not going down to cast up. The Spirit's going to jump on me and go into the car with me and come home and rape my kids in the middle of the night and they'll all have spiritual spouses in the morning. I said, no, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> love it. I love it. I'm really, I, you know what's amazing? I am not this funny. <laughs> Ask my kids. I am not this funny. It's, I, just, I love it. I love the Lord. Amen. The Lord's good. He always does better than I could do. Amen. Deliverance. Here we go. This, it's not a thing of do's and don'ts. We want to understand. We want to have, show me the steps. Show me what I, especially guys, show me what I need to do, don't do. It's, Jesus didn't roll like that. He touched lepers, did things on Sundays. I, the one that gets me, oh, you need your, your eyes hurting. Okay, come here. All right, get a little bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Okay. Something put something. I'm pretty sure somebody put something in Luke's drink that day. Uh, he did not. No way. He hawked a loogie and. <laughs> some holy mucus amen what is, what is he trying to show us don't exalt the he he did it these different ways because you know, he knew our weakness he knew that we would you know solidify a certain way and then when you solidify it it ends up being coming stale and then crystallized and there's no move, uh, moving or fluidity to it there's no moving of the spirit See, you're always doing things different ways. So it's not, it's, not a th it's not about do's and don'ts. Oh, I can't touch this. Oh, I can't. No. I, I'm, no, don't let them do this. Don't let them touch you here. Don't let them do this. And they're like, Ugh. is this fear-based or faith-based? Too many times in deliverance, we get into superstitious beliefs. Well, I don't want to get zapped. I got to oh, stand over here and I can't talk to this person. And I can't look there and I can't look at this and I can't smell that and I can't go there and I can't go into this store because they did this. You know, everything in this world has been sullied in some form or fashion. The Lord says about us, none does right. 
We're, our righteousness is like filthy rags. Amen. So don't get caught in do's and don'ts and make your, your spiritual warfare and your deliverance a system of regulations. That's, that's not what it's about. We fight a fight of faith. I have to have faith. I didn't worry about what's going to happen if I go into a prison. I used to go in there half the time I didn't go. I didn't have a helper. So I go through the first set of doors to get in the building. Then I go through a second set of doors to get into the actual, you know, clear the security. Then I go into another door to get in the elevator. Then I go out of another door to get out of the elevator. Then I went in another door to get into the <clears throat> Sally Porter, wherever you call that. Then I get in another door to get into the actual block or whatever they call that. And then I went through another door and I ended up a room this size right here with 13, 14, 15 men, maximum security jail. I'm at their mercy. I can either do's and don'ts and fear and this and that and their spirits and this thing and that, or I can go by faith. And I think Jesus would say go by faith. I digress. Let's get back on track. Amen. How are we doing? Any thoughts, any questions? Okay, we're doing good. So you have people coming with different soils. Yes, ma'am. You know, and you're sowing the same seeds in the same environment, but people accept it differently because of their soil. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to get that person soil ready, you know, for your receiving more seed? Are you bringing them, hooking them into the, you know, church more and well, that's exactly it. That's 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 exactly it. You know, however that looks for each individual, each circumstance could be different, but those are good examples right there. But that's my point of this training is to get you to look beyond tonight. This altar call, this time, this deliverance, try to help them, prepare them for whatever obstacle or whatever thing is coming. Help, help them and impart something on them. Like you said, you know, call them or whatever. Can I get your number? Can I follow up with you? Someone who is weak. Um, so, yes, that's exactly it. And I, I try to weave some of those little examples in. But just I think the biggest thing is being aware of that. Like we're doing the same thing here several nights a week and on Zoom, but we get different results with different people. What's the rub? Well, the rub is what's going on in here. So if we know that there's better and less ideal or optimal soil in here, we can speak to that. And with, that's basically it. You're speaking to that. Um, one of the things, you know, uh, since you mentioned it, is like give people homework. Give people homework. You know, I go, I'm in the trades, and about five years ago, I was starting to get a locked shoulder, Okay. So I was like, this is where it was stopping. I mean, it, I could go further, but it hurt. And I could see the writing on the wall. In the trades, in an, an elbow or a shoulder is pretty common. So I started going to different places to get a massage. And the first mistake is I went to PV Mall. And those guys, I swear they bred them with lobsters because they're... <laughs> <laughs> and after 30 minutes of that, he's like, you need to come back. You're so tight. You're so tight. And I'm like, well, I, mean, I feel like I'm getting attacked by aliens here. It was not pleasant. So I ended up finding someone at Massage Envy who said, yes, this is what is wrong. And this is what you need to do. And there's two choices. You either can get to it underneath the shoulder blade or deep in the armpit. That's not pleasant either. So I'm laying to <laughs> But hey, no pain. None. None. And my same thing with my, because I'm always holding drills and things like that. Same thing with my elbow. Would have elbow pain. And because she knows what she's doing. So when we know what we're doing, we can help a specific condition and then what she does is she says yeah you need to go home and you need to do this stretch because that stretch is going to help whatever issue so specific 
Don't just throw spaghetti at the wall. Don't just say, read John. Read the New Testament 15 times before Monday. You know, don't, you know if it's not genuine, if it's not authentic, don't, don't, don't say it, right? But you can, you can walk over to the rack and give them one of those resources. Like, hey, have you, oh, you haven't been here before. Did you see that these are here? Hey, take this. Do the miracle list. You know? Oh, you, do you know praying tongues? Here, take praying tongues. You know? Uh, you, you know, just give, give them something specific to what they're doing, to what they're going through to help them, to help them break through. So thank you for that question. Any other questions? Okay. I think they're scared of me, Kelly. <laughs> Galatians 6. Galatians 6 says, Don't be deceived. God is mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we don't give up. So then, as we have opportunity to let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith, right there is a strategy that you can help someone who's weary. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep pressing in. Amen? The first one on the path, jumping around here a little bit, pardon me, weary. Weary. The words that came to mind, and as I was thinking about the condition of this person's heart, and this is the one where they're thrown along the path, and they hear the devil comes and takes it away, just like the birds eating it off the seed. So those, those paths around the fields that weren't for farming, but people walked on, and they got, they got beat down. A lot of people come here have been beaten down by life. So they've been walked over. Come on, taken advantage of, walked over walked on, abused, neglected, rejected. They, they've become hard. They're weary. They can't even receive the word. I see them in there on some Friday nights. It's like nothing even, no joy, no excitement, no response, no reaction. They're, they've been beat down. They're weary. The word that is sown is stolen by the devil, aborting salvation. Now, this word saved, as most of you know, sozo in the Greek, Greek has a few different definitions. It's to save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, to save someone from suffering from mental or physical illness. How many know God saved you from one of those things, right? He can, he, to save can mean to make well, to heal, or to restore to, to restore to health. To save can mean to preserve one who is in danger of destruction. To save or to rescue like a lifeguard would. To save and the most common sense that we think of is delivering from the penalties of the messianic judgment and saving from the evils that prevent receiving that messianic deliverance. My point is this, that this saving is not just about salvation, but saving them winning in an area of their life, of getting victory in an area of their life. The enemy can come in and steal that word and abort that salvation. It says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, Matthew 13, 19, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one that was sown along the path. Other words that come to mind for this heart condition, vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Just like that seed was easily plucked up by the, by the birds. Beat down, which I mentioned. Rejected. Walked all over. Wore out. 
But there's always hope. Proverbs 18.20 says, From the fruit of a man's mouth his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. What you speak into that person's life can bring life. You know, I had a, a hiatus here where I didn't, I didn't speak and I wasn't, I wasn't serving here. And as I mentioned last time, it kind of gave me a, a fresh take on approach. And the, in the time that I was gone, I wasn't just doing nothing. I, I'm a, a big believer in scripture memorization. You know, when I used to go to the jails, and this is applicable, this is a training class. When I used to go to the jails, and some messages would hit, and you feel like a million bucks, right? There's no better feeling in the world than you're operating in your calling. And then some messages would fall flat, and I would feel like poop. <laughs> feel horrible. And I was trying to figure out, okay, what's the rhyme or reason here? And the first thing that I stumbled on is, is it's... It's easier to speak and have passion and have, you know, conviction if you really know the word, you know, like some of your favorite scriptures If somebody asks you to talk about your favorite scriptures and, you know, you know, taking every thought captive, the obedience of Christ or, you know, something like that. You know, there would be some passion. There would be some energy to it. But if they asked you to speak about something you're less familiar with, you would you might not be as convincing. It might not be as powerful. So I committed myself to scripture memorization. And there's an app called Scripture Typer. Scripture Typer. And you can, you, you go through and it, as you learn the scripture, it brings it up every day and then every other day and then every few days and then every week and then every month. And so I've been working on that for uh, several years. And um, I review about, 10 a day, 10 to 15 a day. And um, my point is this, that before when I was trying to help someone and praying for someone, that I might just have whatever information I got from them or whatever information that I have or whatever few familiar verses I had at my disposal, but after being a true student, true studying the word, meditating on the word, which has its own benefits, amen, which has its own benefits. Now I can, because those words are closer to my heart, I can speak into someone's life. And, and, and that's what he's saying here in Proverbs. He's saying, from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips that you can, and then it says death and life are in the power of the tongue that you can literally bring forth life and productivity and that 30, 60, 100 fold increase by your mouth. And the best thing that you can really do for someone is you can speak the word into their life. Amen. Amen. You know, you're, you're above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You know, nothing is impossible with God. You know, all things will work out to good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Like, in those moments when they're here and they're in the battle and they're being stripped away of things that they've been struggling with, you have a golden opportunity to speak life into their life. Does that make sense? I, I, as much as we're trying to get things out of them, we need to put things in there. We need to fill them up. We need to build them up. And we do that by our words. You know, Ezekiel saw the valley of the dry bones and said, okay, well, only you know, Lord. He's like, what do you see? Only you know, Lord. Can they live? Only you know, Lord. And then he guides them through. He says, speak to them. <laughs> so they might come in a dry bone. They might come in weak, weary, but we can speak to them. We can speak life into them and get them on that path. And I encourage you to get into the word more and more. Any, any thoughts or comments about weary? What's that, what's that app again? We're trying to find it right now. Script, scripture typer. Scripture typer. Yeah, it's this one right here. Yeah. It says Bible memory with oh. the red and white. The first 50 are free. The first 50 you can do, and you can edit them. 
And then, um, so it's neat. So today, so I have on my review, so I usually do it at night before I go to bed. So they're green now. And then see how there's a time stamp on there, like five hours and change. So that is to the day or month that I last completed, I reviewed it. And so that's Second Corinthians 2, 14, 15. And so it looks like this. So it's, it's, there's nothing on there, but when I first started, it looked like this, okay? And as I'm going through and I'm learning the scripture, and this is the scripture, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Okay, so to learn it, I hit the first letter, but thanks be to God who I, in Christ, always leads us through in triumphal. See, I missed it, so it turned red, okay? And you just have to hit the first letter. And then once I get it, then it's every other word. Hmm. This is how I do it. My kids go to a Christian school, so I write this on postcards for them. And then the teacher's like, that's a good idea. Well, it wasn't my idea, but... So then it's every other. So now Which I'm in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, 15. It's a pretty cool one. And then, uh, and then in 3, there's nothing. And so then this one, you've, they've, if you get it on this, they, at 90%, they consider it memorized. And so on this one, I say, but to him who in, to God... But thanks be to God, who in Christ Jesus, oh, Christ, see, I put Jesus at always, leads us in triumphal procession. And through him spreads the fragrance of him, the aroma of Christ, the knowledge of him everywhere. So I haven't done this one in four months, okay? Mm. So I, once I get it after three or four months, I just put them on repeat. But my point is, is that, see, I struggled with insomnia. And the, I had quite the epiphany one night. The Lord was like, you know, Dave, if you're listening to sports radio at one in the morning on the side of your bed, that might be why you're having a hard time going to sleep. <laughs> Certainly not helping. <laughs> so I... Um, I said, okay, Lord. So I started listening to, uh, I think, praise and worship music. And uh, started, you know, I was a very religious person. I read my word every morning. So I was doing everything I needed to do to be delivered and saved. Not. And so what God kind of impressed upon me is, hey, put me at the end of the day. Just like you put me at the beginning, put me at the end. So I started listening to different music. One of the, uh, stop listening to the talk radio. And now it's, it's the scripture memorization. I do I lay down in bed. I got 10, 12, 15 or whatever. I go through, I do those. And I, I'll, if I'm done, if I'm still awake, I'll look at the news or I'll look at my email or whatever. And then I'll fall asleep. Um, I started doing that like if you're ever waiting in line somewhere and you're just doing pointless, meaningless stuff on your phone that's really not going to amount to anything or last anything, which is, you know, it's fun to do sometimes. But let's have some eternal reward too, right? So, okay, now it's something I can do with my phone. It prompts me. I want to stay on, on task driven. I want to stay on top of it. So I'm staying on top of it and then I'm able to help people. And then I'm able to prayerfully, if someone I notice is weak, weary or wayward, I can speak living words that God is watching over to perform into their lives. Amen? The other thing that I did is, in those nighttime hours, I would do the self-deliverance. So I printed that out, and I had that by my bed. And I think in some really tough cases, you know, that helps people. And, uh, you know, I was sitting there, and I was laying hands on myself, and meditating on the blood of Jesus. And like, hey, hey, check this out. Have you done the self-deliverance? Have you tried this at night? You have a problem sleeping, you know, boom, boom. Or how do you end your day? How do you start your day? Well, then I had kids and that threw it all for a loop, right? So now I'm really being tested. Am I weak or am I strong? Like, let's be honest. If 
your day gets disrupted and you don't get to do your morning devotional and, and you struggle that day, you're not as strong as you think. <laughs> and I can say that because that was said to me. Amen. I'm not throwing stones or pointing fingers, but I had that epiphany. Hey, I'm not the mighty preacher that I think I am. If I can't spend a few minutes in the word and then I go out and it's like all hell breaks loose. And, I, and I'm upset for half the morning or half the day. I'm not as strong as I thought I was. So, okay, all right. Well, I'm holding a baby. Mama's sleeping. The baby's got to eat. I can't put the baby on the floor. I got to do this. I got to get ready. You know, okay, all right, all right. That whole routine is screwed. So what am I going to do now? All right, what other ways can I, uh, okay, I can uh, pray in tongues when I drive to work. That's what I started doing. I could. Turn on Christian radio. I can listen to a podcast. I can do the scripture members. It, you know, you got to be nimble. Yeah. You got to be nimble. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be. You have to continually be feeding yourself, strengthening yourself throughout the day. You know, um, and that may be an encouragement for some people there as well as, as being diverse in their devotion. And the Lord has stretched me in that. I'm not, I'm not someone naturally loves to pray. got really quiet in here. Hey, I'm just being honest. So I have to, it's much easier to talk than pray. Amen. So um, <laughs> I, have to, I have to push myself. I have to challenge myself. It's a discipline. I have to, you know, I, I had a friend call me up and he told me that things were going on in his marriage and God put it on my heart. And I said, you know what? I'm sorry. I haven't been praying for you and your marriage. <laughs> and he never asked me to, but I realized that in a way, I wasn't being a good steward. You know, he's, he's trying to take not only him, but his wife and kids and two dogs from here to there. <laughs> no joke. Four kids, two dogs. He's holding it down. He's trying to go from here to there. He's somewhere in here wallowing, weak, weary, getting beat up by the devil. The least I could do is say a prayer for him when he comes to my mind. I really felt convicted. And if there's anything I'm going to pray for, it's going to, I'm going to pray for marriages. Everybody over here, not in their head because you've been married. That stuff ain't easy. I almost really shook a box there. <laughs> it's, so it's those things. And what am I doing? I, I'm strengthening myself. I'm getting, you know, I'm getting stronger. I'm helping someone else. We're, but I'm helping him get across here. So then, so then there's this men's class that popped up, this discipleship class that I've been through, and I know the merit of it, and I find out through kind of, uh, you know, serendipitously that there's a class going on over here, and I call up these two guys, and I say, hey, you should go to this class. I'll go to this class with you. I went through it. It's a nine-month class, 10-month, uh, uh, 11-month, nine books, nine workbooks. I went through it once. I taught it twice. Like, I, you know, been there, done that. I got soccer and football on Wednesday nights and so uh, football on Friday nights and soccer on Saturday mornings. And I work all day, right? And you do all these, you know, all these different things. And they got a class going on Tuesday night. And I got two guys. Their, their marriages look like dumpster fires. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, do you want to go to this class? Meet me there. And they met me there, which is amazing. <laughs> Because how many know we know things that will help people that half the time they don't want to do it? So they have some good soil. Thank God. God bless Roy. God bless Christian. So I get them there. I go in there. And I'm just trying to get them plugged in. Just getting them plugged in. I'm trying to get them from A to B. I will go sit in that class that I've already been through three times. <laughs> and I could teach the class. I've taught the class. And I didn't, I didn't think the guy did a very good job. And it was very hard. And then, no, that's not my place. I don't want that class. I don't want to run that class. I don't want to do that every Tuesday night for the next nine months. I'm just being honest. I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. The Lord had to put me in check. He said, you want to, you want to do, okay, okay. You want to run it? No, oh, yeah, no, I'll shut up. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm trying to get this guy from point A to point B. I'm trying to get him plugged in. I'm just showing up because he's there. And I went a few times and I kind of, oh, I, I don't have to go anymore. The Lord's like, go the extra mile. Go the extra mile. 
So I kept going. Went two more weeks or whatever it was. I, that's ways we can get them. Is there a discipleship class? Is there a prayer meeting? Is there something? You know, can you, can you pray for that person? I talked about that last week. Man, pray for, pray for people that are married. Please. Like, if, if there's a, ever an obvious attack from the enemy, it's on families. It's on, it's on husbands and wives and kids and dividing. And, and you know, I heard it the other day that on average, the typical man spends, how much time do you think a day? Some of them, that's zero, right? So how much time in a typical day do you think they spend with their child? Five. Of quality, to, of, of like, how was your day? 15 minutes. I, that shirt looks nice on you. You look so good. Good job. 15 minutes. 35 seconds. Hey, how you doing? You ready for school? All right. All right, you got breakfast? Good. All right. Brush your hair. Brush your teeth. Get out of the door. How was school today? All right. Did you clean your room? You got your homework? Time for bed. Wow. Hey, I've done that. I'm just... I, I'm not going to get up here and call the kettle black because then liberals will say I'm racist. I can't do that. Amen. <laughs> Did I just say that out loud? I'm not sure. Fear, those fear tactics. You've got to have faith. Weak, weary, wayward. The ones that are distracted. The cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. Riches choke out the life. Their fruit does not mature. I've been thinking about this person type. This person, they have, they have the right soil. They don't have the right environment. They don't have the right, there's things that they've allowed in their world that are overgrowing and stealing from the life that is supposed to go to the, to the real seed. These people, they're not like the weak and weary. These people are doing stuff. They're active. They're, they're getting things done. They're getting promotions. They're starting this. They're doing this. They're completing lists. They're not, they're not lazy. They're not, they're not checked out. These people, they're, they're actually can do what you're asking them to do. They look like good soil, but in their life, they have other things that steal life from what they, where it needs to go from the wrong place. They're wayward. They're distracted by the cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. This person needs help remembering to keep it simple, to stay focused on Jesus. You know, some people, I want to do this and I want to do this. And I'm ready to do this. I'm like, just hold on. Just give it another season. Just wait. You know, one of the most important things I ever learned, it was from that men's curriculum. So maybe it's good that I went back. But uh, my first ministry... What's my first ministry? You. My first ministry as a Christian is to the Lord. There's a ministry there. There's servant. There's worship. There's time. There's that's a ministry. Like your own individual. What's number two? Or your spouse. There's ministry there. Listening, praying, serving, helping, assisting. Right? There's I, one of the most profound things I've ever heard is listening is ministry. I mean, we don't have to be spiritual superstars or superheroes. I mean, some a lot of times they'll just tell you. <laughs> I talked about that last time. It was like, just ask questions. What's going on? What do you need help with? Third ministry. Children. Hey, we go. You guys are seeing the picture. What's fourth? Career. Yes, thank you. So what would be fifth? There you go. Yeah, yeah I know you know, Aaron. Why is career above ministry? Because you be living on the streets, man. Come on. 
you got to have the lights on, roof over your head, four wheels and a motor, unless you want to ride the bus. You still got to pay for the bus ticket. You got to, you got to this, whoop, and then this is, whoop, and I tell people that, and then they stop coming back to the, the doctor block. It's like, ah, oh, Mary, my girl, you are our best one. I said, no. I said, you got to take care of your husband. You got to take care of your young family. We'll, we'll be fine. If more people did this, we would need a lot less of that. That's my philosophy. It's a short window here. And the enemy, he wants to create a, a divide there because then he can get, and this doesn't matter, and this has no power. Right. Weak, weary, wayward. For those, Romans 8, 5 through 8, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is, yes, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Life and peace, cares of this world. And to me, that's the, one of the coolest verses there is. To set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Everyone who comes through these doors is looking for life and looking for peace. Hey. Keep focusing on God. Keep chasing Jesus. Live by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Those are things that you can encourage people to stay on track, to get on track. But to set the mind, for the mind that is set on the flesh is, this is so interesting, is blank to God. This is the ESV. The, yes, enmity, hostile. The mind that is set on the flesh is to God. Opposed. For it does not. Remember? Well, you got the first. You're still ahead of the class. So you can, that's human instinct right there. Human nature. Oh, I got a little bit. of. I got a head. I can, oh, I can rest. We all do it, right? For it does not submit. To God's law. Indeed, it cannot. This is the wayward person, the wrong pursuits. Like, no, I got to do it my way. I'm not willing to do it my way. They haven't made him Lord. This is the most powerful transaction. And it's not just a one-time thing. I raised my hand and said a prayer and filled out the card and took a special bath. No, this is, is he your Lord? Is, and that might be a question to ask people. Is he, is Jesus truly your Lord? And you may not have to even answer that question. That's a question for them to answer with their time, in their heart, with God. Hey, what are you struggling with? What are you dealing with? Okay, okay. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. I, I butter that biscuit before I serve it. Amen. I say, I butter it up. I say, hey, I don't know. I could be wrong. But... Is Jesus truly and fully your Lord? Like, or just partially? That's, that's, that's sobering, isn't it? I'm not even asking myself if it's sobering. That could be, that could be the hang-up. For the mind that is set on the flesh, Romans 8, this is probably verse 7, is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot and then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You know, we, and, um, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We know that, right? You have to have faith. You draw near to him. He'll draw near to you. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Here it says, if you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. Keep pointing them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. Get to Jesus. Get more, more, more. Weak, weary, wayward. Here's my takeaway. The majority of people will face opposition to the deliverance from within. Their poor heart condition makes them vulnerable. It makes it inevitable. They need encouragement for the road. They need a little something in their back pocket to make it through. 
you can be the person that supplies them with that weapon, that hope, that encouragement that gets them through. Give them homework. Encourage them. Give them a word. Give them a scripture. Not as a rule, not as a religious requirement, not as a successful part of ministry, but as you're prompted and led by the Spirit. The ministry resources, a book or author recommendation, a spiritual discipline, even a recommended course of action or or, a regimen like me with having to stretch a certain way. Homework provides an opportunity to reflect on the Word, and that in and of itself is going to help it take root, right? It's not, if I'm reflecting on it, it's not being taken away. It's not drying up. It provides an opportunity for them to reflect on the word and to increase its yield as they continue to chew on what they have learned. And as I was finishing this morning the message and I was seeking the Lord, what came to mind was the upper room discourse. You know what I'm talking about? In John 14, 15, and 16, where Jesus, they have the Last Supper, and Judas leaves to betray him. And it's like the longest, it seems to me, as far as I know, like the longest, most, the, as far as not interrupted message that Jesus had, and probably the most, Powerful, impactful, because he was talking as like a group like this, you know. But obviously with a much better speaker. And, and uh, it's okay, you can laugh. I, I had to say that. I was like, okay, I said, yes, I need to say it. And um, I'd rather say that than have a thorn in the flesh. Amen. <laughs> you can either be humbled or stay humble. I don't see how much I don't so this, this 14, 15, and 16, I read it a couple of times this morning, and he, the first thing he says is, let not your hearts be troubled. See how this ties in to your, to your heart? He says, wait, you know what's going to happen. He spent three years with them. He's going to go to the cross. He's going to be gone tomorrow. They're not going to know where he is for a few days. They're not going to know what's going to happen. They're not going to know what to do. Was this a hoax? Was this... They didn't really understand the whole picture. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in me. I'm going to go prepare a place for you. If it wasn't so, I, 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 would, I wouldn't tell you. I'm going to come again to get you. Thomas is like, well, what's the deal? He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Keep following Jesus no matter what happens. He says, he says show us the Father. He's like, you've seen him. I'm the Father. The, the themes that I caught through here is that he says, um, that they're going to have trouble, right? He says, you'll have trouble. He says, you're going to have opposition. He says, uh, things like remain in me, abide in me. He says, if you stay in me, you're going to bear fruit and the fruit will remain. Isn't that in there? He says, I'm leaving you, but I'm sending you a helper. The helper is a theme in here. The helper, like, I know it's hard. Jesus says, I know it's hard to get fully from point A to point B, but you're going to have a helper. Some people need that reminder. You always have a helper with you. You always have the Holy Spirit with you. He is always there. He can always help you. There's always a way of an escape. Amen. No temptation is uncommon to man. Jesus was tempted all these things and he sinned not. Therefore, he's a faithful high priest. He always lives to make intercession for you. He's making intercession for you. What a powerful picture to share with somebody that as you're going through life, Jesus Christ is making intercession for you, that he can save you to the uttermost. Amen? That's, there's power in that. He says, your helper, don't worry, your helper's coming. He will be there. He will be there with you. He's going to remind you of the thing I said. The Holy Spirit, you can tell people, is going to remind you of what you need to know. He's going to remind you of the spiritual lessons. He's going to be there for you. He says, um, I've told you these things before they take place so that when they take place, you'll know, you'll remember. See how, he, see how he's preparing them for the opposition, the obstacles? It's the same thing as this, this, this training. He's doing the exact same thing, or I'm copying him, amen? I'm copying him. I didn't know it. I just stumbled on it. Dumb luck. Dumb luck. Hey, I just wait. I wait. When, I, when I'm, Brother Mike asked me to speak, I just wait. I wait and I listen. 
I don't try to formulate, I used to try to formulate a message. I used to like, okay, what do I want to talk about? And I say, oh, that's a good one. You know? And I learned, like, that's not the way to do it. I just wait. I just wait. And I th things come across my radar and I wait. If you ever ask to speak, I feel, this is probably the best advice I could give you. Don't feel like, oh, I got to start on Sunday to finish by Friday or whatever. Like, just wait. Wait to hear from the Lord. And, and I just, the parable of the four soils, the four hearts, kept coming to mind. I'm like, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what the Lord wants me to speak on. And I start working on it, start working on it. And then I think it was just this morning, I was kind of rehearsing it in my mind. And, uh, and then this, this dialogue came in. I thought, oh, this is good. This is good, Lord. This is good. This is what you were doing. You knew that their hearts were not strong. Thomas's heart wasn't strong. They got distracted. Jesus was crucified. Half of them were fishing the next day. Oh, cares of this world. We're, we don't have Jesus anymore. We've got to make, we got to pay the bills. I don't want to live on the street. Let's go back to fishing, John, James. Let's go. He knew the same thing was going to happen to them. That happens to the same people that come in here. And he said, look, look, I'm going to spend some time with you. Uh, there's a helper. He says it like three or four times. He says, I'm warning you before. He says, he's going to come get you. Hey, just keep going. Make it to the end. Make it to the end. He's not going to, he's not going to, he's not going to leave you hanging. If he started good work, he's going to finish it. And, the, and he says, um, another thing about abiding, he says, he's the vine, you're the branches, abide in me, and your fruit will remain. That whole thing about the uh, parable of the soils is about fruit and increase and, and remaining. Um, 16, one says, I've said these things to you to keep you from falling away. To keep you from, I mean, that's exactly it. Some of you, they'll kill and they think they're doing service to God. He's warning you of the worst possible things that could happen. And then he says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. 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 Case closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, obviously I was excited about that. I thank you again for your time and I hope and I pray that it brings forth fruit. It was kind of a new concept for me. I was working, working those things, some of those things out as I was going along, but to have it kind of highlighted in the Bible like that in the weak, weary, and wayward, I praise God for that. That's a good reminder of, of what we need to do to get people across the finish line. And one other thing that I was reflecting on is the difference between David and Solomon. So like father, son. And that's, you've seen the father, you've seen the son. There's, there's the closest that pe two people, right, as far as DNA, things like that. Pretty, pretty darn close. Solomon was the wisest man ever lived. He had the head knowledge. But man, his heart was jacked up. He was, he was one of those other soils. He knew what to do, but he couldn't get himself to do it. He knew all the right things to say. He knew all the things that he wished he would have done because he told them to his son. But he didn't have that in here to get it done. Now, David had his fair share of mistakes too. There's no doubt about it. But he had the right soil. He had the right soil. And I was reading Psalm 51 about how, and I, and I pray this is your prayer and your approach, because we always want to start with ourselves to the Lord. And we know that he was called a man after God's own heart. And there's a lot of questions about that and why. And why. I, I just think it's what he did with the word and how he responded and how we responded to God's holiness in light of his own sin. And it, it says in here in Psalm 51, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. I mean, that, if that's not a way to start deliverance, I don't know what is. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only I have sinned. Make it right with God. Make it about God. Don't make it about that knucklehead. Make it about God. 
Don't, don't focus on who owes you and who hurt you and who abused you. Make it about God. Sorry, Lord, for being judgmental. Sorry for being critical. Sorry for being hard-hearted. Sorry for wishing ill will. Verse 6, Behold, you delight in, you delight in truth, in the inward being, in the heart. And you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you've broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take me not from your Holy Spirit within me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Deliver me from, the blood, from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation. My tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart, O God. You will not despise. That right there. If people need a heart surgeon, send them to Jesus and send them to the Psalms. Get in the Psalms, man. How many battles David fought? How many went through? They're weak. They're weary. All right. I digress. Let's pray. Any thoughts? Any questions? You guys are ready to go? Amen. I, I, I have that effect on people. <laughs> we can uh, dim the lights. Thank you for coming. I'm gonna, yeah, go ahead. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you again soon. I just feel prompted instead of talking more. Let's just have like five minutes quiet, stillness. You and the Lord. Could have been something I said, it could have been something from the Word, it could have been something completely different. But the point is, it doesn't matter what I say, what I know. It doesn't matter what the Word says. It matters how it interacts with your heart. That's, that's what I feel like we're supposed to do. So let's take five minutes, pray, meditate, think on the Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For power, your anointing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your purpose, restoration. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yeah, thank you, thank Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank, thank you. you for your salvation, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your power. sacrifice. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your dedication. Your fidelity. Thank you, Lord, for your love. <coughs> your joy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. I just saw these storming seas and they just turned calm. It's like a beautiful blue, just calm. Yes, Lord. I was like, what is it, Lord? And it was just his word, his word that is active, just silences, diffuses, immobilizes the enemy right now right now in Jesus name
Yes, Lord. Yes. Come on, Lord. Right now, break it off. Break it off. Break every chain right now. Break it. Restore souls right now in Jesus' name. Restore souls. I speak life. Life abundant right now in Jesus' name. I speak restoration right now. I speak healing in Jesus' name. Restore. Right now. Shot, yes, Jesus. Strength. I speak longevity right now. Longevity. To increase right now. Opportunities. The anointing. The understanding right now. Break it off, Lord. Break it off right now. The heartache. That death. Come out, in Jesus' name. That loss. Come out. Come out, spirit of death. Come out. You thief. Stole time. You're going to pay sevenfold. He's been caught. He stole time from your youths. He shall pay. He's going to pay. He's going to pay. It's going to be reaped in the kingdom of God. It's going to be reaped for his glory. What the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. I speak goodness. I take your past and I rebrand it by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary that what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. There's a greater purpose. There's a greater plan right now in Jesus' name. Right now, shuck out a sickness. Right now, infirmity of the lungs. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out right now. Get out. Get out, you vile thing. Get out in Jesus' name. Right now. Shuck it up. Shuck it up. Cleanse her right now in Jesus' name. Move in a mighty way, Lord. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And it shall abide and remain forever. As the Son remains in the house forever, so shall you remain forever. He has set you free. You are no longer a slave of sin and death, but of righteousness, everlasting, eternal life, freedom right now in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, touch his heart right now in Jesus' name. Touch it, Lord. Touch it. Touch it right now. I speak vitality. I speak health, function, and flow, the anointing and understanding in the seeds that have been sown in seasons past. May they come to bear fruit in seasons present, Lord. Your time has come. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. Whom shall we fear? Whom shall we be afraid? For the Lord your God is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, the sustainer. He loves you. You are loved with an everlasting love. Steadfastly. His mercy is new every morning. Your transgressions are blound, blotted out. Your iniquity is no more. You are his daughter. You are his daughter. He is your father. You are a joint heir with Christ. The old must go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Go. Go in Jesus' name. I speak new life. New life in Jesus' name. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Break it off. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break it. Break it. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of his promise. What fellowship shall Christ have with Belial, the temple of God with idols? You are trespassing, devil. Tell him you're trespassing. I've repented. You're trespassing. I cancel your assignment in the name of Jesus. Leviathan, come out in Jesus' name. You serpent of old, come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Loose her right now. Loose her. Loose her, Jesus. Loose her. Let her go right now in Jesus' name. Let her go right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of his blood, I speak healing right now from the top of her head. 
with the soles of her feet, from the depths of her soul, right now, in her heart, to her head, her hands, her stomach, right now, Lord, right now, Jesus, right now, right now, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, thank you, thank you for your daughter, right now. Thank you, Lord, for your daughter. Thank you for the purpose. Thank you, Lord. You make all things new. The pain, the disappointment. You sowed in tears. You will reap in joy. Though you sowed in tears, you shall reap in joy. The Lord is going to redeem those seasons. There's going to be new life. New meaning, new purpose. Right now, the old is gone. Behold, he makes all things new. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now. Yes. 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 Go, 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 Yes. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Loose me right now. Loose me. Loose me. Go, 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 right now. Go in Jesus' name. Go right now. Shake it up over here. Right now. Yes, Jesus. Right now. The trauma, the oppression. Get out. Get out in Jesus' name. Go. Go. Loose me. Loose me. Loose me, Jesus. Deliver me now. Deliver me. Deliver me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my brother. Right now. Shut up or shake it up, Mama. Yes, Jesus. Yeah, Loose me right now. Loose me right now. Get out. Go. 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 Right now. Stop it. Go. I tell you to stop it, devil. Stop. Stop it. I cancel your assignment right now. What's been done has been covered and washed in the blood. I'm forgiven. I'm cleansed. I'm pure. I'm holy in his sight. Right now. Shame. Go. Shame. Go. Guiltiness. Go. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Self-hate, rejection. Get out, you rejection demon. Get out, you evil, wicked rejecter. Go. 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 You had her ear long enough. Let her go. Let her go, you liar. You liar. Get out, you liar. Get out. Get out, liar. Go. Go. Get out, you liar. Get out, you liar. I speak truth. Holy, beloved, chosen, righteous, pure, justified, cleansed, washed by his blood. Anything else that exalts itself against the word of God is a lie. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. Fearfully and wonderfully made in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the precious gift of life. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Strength. Pray strength, wisdom. Order his steps, Lord. Order his steps. Thank you, Lord. Plan his way. Put those words in his mouth. Give the tongue what to say. He's a vessel yielded to you, God, for your glory, your might. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Pray those gifts. Pray for those gifts to be stirred up right now. Stir up those gifts, Lord. Stir them up. Lord, stir them up right now. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. The love, mercy right now. The burdens be broken off. Break off those burdens. Breaking off those burdens. We break off those yokes in Jesus' mighty name. We break off the yokes, the bondages, the fear. 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 Go. Get out, fear. Fear of man. Fear of rejection. Fear of failure. 
Fear of death. Get out fear of death right now. Come on. Come on. That's it, Lord. That's it. That's it. Get out, you. Get out, you murderer. Get out, you murderous spirit. Get out, you murderer. You. Come on. Those curses. Get out, curses. Go. Get out. Get out those vows. I repent, Father, the vows that I made. I'm so sorry, Lord, for the curses I've spoken, for harm and ill will. Get out. Get out, murder. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out, murder. Get out, murder. Go, 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 go. Get out, murder. Go, go. Get out, murder. Go, go, death. Go, 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 death. Go, 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 go. Go, get out. Go, go, go. Get out, murder. Go, 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 go. Out, 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 out. Go, go, go. Get out, murder. Go, 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 go. Right now. Go. Loose her mind right now. Loose her mind right now. Get out of her mind. Go, go, go. Get out of her mind. Go. Right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. My family. Yes, Jesus. My family to you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. We're lifting it up. We're helping you. Release all this burden. Yes. I release the cares of this life. The cares of this I let it go. I don't want it in my heart. David talked about weary and wheezy, wayward, Lord God. I'm tired. Sometimes I'm tired and weary, Lord God. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to release it. Sorry for not trusting you, Lord. Sorry. 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 I let it all go right now. Right now. I let it all go right now. Take a deep breath in and just exhale right now. There you go. There you go. There you go. Another deep breath in. I give it, give it to the Lord right now. Loose her. Get out. Get out, devil. Get out, devil. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Hand it over to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Take that burden, Lord. He's gonna take it right out of you. He's gonna take it. Take it, Lord. Take this burden. He's going to lift it right up out of you. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel lighter. I let it go. That burden is going to go. That fear. Right now, we let it go. We let it go. We let it. Amen. 